Prophetic Judah International Ministries with Prophetess Jacqueline King. Hi everyone, welcome to my show this morning, Teaching the Word of God. Just trusting in God for His Word and His blessings upon my life. <clears throat> I will be teaching from... um the previous teachings that I had done concerning on uh, sex, you know, deliverance from sexual bondage, amen. And um, there's very, not very, but there's a lot of topics to be taught from. And um, I haven't been teaching them like I thought I would. I gave myself a break in between the teachings. And I'm thankful to God that um, I did that, amen. So, this teaching will be on sexual frustrations. Amen. And that is something that uh, needs to be talked about in the body of Christ. You would be amazed how many people are struggling with their sexual desires, their sexual needs. And I will be coming from the Bible, using uh, an example. And as the Lord leads me, I will continue to teach on some more, some more subjects. Amen. So let me get started with a prayer. And as I stated before, giving people the invitation to accept Jesus Christ into their life. If you believe Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and you desire him to be your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is repeat this prayer. Father in heaven. I am sorry for my sins. Please forgive me and write my name in the book of life. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life, come into my heart and live in me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. And um, as I stated, this is a prayer for those who desire to be born again, amen. And if you said this prayer, I would recommend that you find a strong Bible teaching church. That is very important. A Bible believing church for your growth in the word of God through the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. So congratulations to you for accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Father, over to you in Jesus' name. I give you praise and thanks. I thank you for your mercies and your grace upon my life. I thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus that cleanses me from all unrighteousness. I thank you, Father God, for the power of the blood of Jesus that cleanses me from all unrighteousness. I thank you, Father God, that you would teach me to maintain a life of purity and you, those who are listening to this message, Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray that you also teach them to live a life of purity. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Um, for the past couple of weeks, I have been um, studying on and off uh, concerning um, sexual sins. Amen. Because there's a lot of people whether they choose to believe it or not, are struggling with living a life of holiness, you know, maintaining a life of purity. And God desires us to live a life of holiness, to maintain a life that is righteous, you know, righteous meaning in right standing with God, you know, to pray through repentance and fasting and obeying his word seeking his face amen seeking the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you it's so important to seek the word of god to stay in the word of god to study to look up study scriptures etc listen to music um that will strengthen your inner being your inner man strengthen your soul amen um when you start learning to discipline yourself to do these things you will lose so much desire to do things of this world amen it won't even phase you well it doesn't phase me but uh, if you truly are seeking god it shouldn't have any bearing on your life because your face and your your face is focused on him you know keep your eyes on christ amen 
keep your eyes on the cross amen and when you start doing that you'll be able to maintain a life of purity amen and satan the devil he won't be able to use oppression in your life meaning sin amen uh the sin won't be able to disqualify you or cause destruction in your life so no matter what your situation may be the devil will not be able to bring opposition in your life because you're keeping your eyes on Jesus you know you're staying focused you're thinking about the blessings and the things that he wants to do in your life the miracles how he's going to use you to help other people amen and you're going to trust in him and you're going to believe him amen by obeying his word and that is so important and that's why I am going to talk to you about sexual frustrations because it's a lot of marriages falling apart in the kingdom of in the kingdom of God here on earth marriages are supposed to stay together and I think um, a lot of people marry too out of frustration because they don't want to be single they don't want to be alone they don't want to deal with depression they don't want to be stressed out you know time is winding out so a lot of people don't want to <laughs> go through uh, that long period of abstinence you know abstaining from sex uh, and then there's some people that do go through a long period of abstaining sex and sex sex you know that they find a way to deal with their sexual frustrations through masturbation um or whatever the sexual technique they may find but they do it because they don't want to deal with the obsession or having a compulsive behavior that eventually opens the door to um sexual fantasies amen such as pornography uh or daydreaming you know thinking about someone that you want to be intimate with or falling in love with a movie star and this so you know you're having dreams of sleeping with certain movie stars actors and actresses and your sexual pleasures are being fulfilled temporarily and out of that you get sexual frustration because you know you're not dealing with the real person and you really know that your sexual desires are not being met and like I said in my other um, teaching concerning familiar spirits it opens the door for satanic activity in your life amen it opens the door to satanic uh, influences such as the incubus succubus spirits they come in with a familiar spirit they look like somebody you know and you think you're having sex with that person when actuality you ain't having sex but with a demon so if you want to hear more on that message go to familiar spirits amen and that message I pray will help you now I'm going to teach from the Bible which is the best thing I could do and I'm going to uh, 2nd Samuel uh, chapter 2 no, excuse me, Second Samuel uh, chapter 13. I'm not going to read all of the scripture, but you should take time for yourself and try to read all of that scripture. And hopefully you will gain the understanding of why I am teaching about sexual frustrations. Um, you know, it's amazing how... When people are not disciplined in their life, it's amazing how they will find particular reasons to justify their sexual behaviors. And a lot of these sexual behaviors uh, get activated at a very young age uh, through sexual abuse, child abuse, um, having, uh, practice, having sex early, practicing sex on self self sex such as I said earlier uh, masturbation watching pornography or watching other people actually having sex you know not just by video but actually seeing it or sex being sexually abused when you don't know how to manage your sexual emotions so you find yourself abusing 
the women in your life or vice versa. It could be women abusing the men. Um, we're living in a day and age where men are sleeping with men and women are sleeping with women or they're doing both bisexuals. Um, it's more rampant now than ever. This is something that's been going on for centuries and centuries. But a lot of it is stemmed from frustrations. But I'm not making no excuses for it because whoever's doing that needs deliverance. Amen. So the teaching is so important because anyone that's dealing with sexual frustrations, like I said earlier, will not be able to maintain a life of purity, you know, a life of righteousness because they're being oppressed, uh, satanically oppressed with the sin. Amen. And as a result of the sin, which is sexual frustrations, uh, they are now qualified for destruction. Amen. They are qualified for destruction because they have this satanic influence in their life. You know, a generational curse, a transference of spirits that was handed down through somebody else's uh, father or father's mother, mother, etc. You would be amazed how some of these things come about. And because family are not, family members in general are not honest with each other, a lot of times we don't realize that what we are experiencing somebody else in our family has already been there and done that okay so let's get to the scripture it says right here in second samuel chapter 13 and it came to pass after this that absalom the son of david had a fair sister whose name was tamar and amon the son of david loved her and amon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister tamar for she was a virgin. Hold that thought. She was a virgin. And he got vexed. He was angry in his spirit. He was getting frustrated because he wanted to have sex. Amen. Why? Because his sister was a virgin. And she was fair. She was beautiful. And he knew no one had touched her. Amen. But it says right here. Amos thought it hard for him to do anything to her. So, you know, as a brother, quite naturally, you won't want to hurt your sister sexually or any of your siblings sexually. But because of advice, poor advice that he had received from his friend, if you look at verse 3, it says, um, Amon had a friend whose name was Jonah, Jonah Dab, the son of Shemina, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why art thou being the king's son, lean from day, day to day? Will thou not tell me? And Amos said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it and eat it at her hand. So Amon lay down and had and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat at her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amon's house, dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amon's house, and he was laid down. And she took flour and kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight, and did bake the cakes. And she took a pan and poured them out before him. But he refused to eat. And Amos said, Have have out all men from me. They went out every man from him. So, you know, this brother, uh, Absalom, brother, Tamar's brother, I, from another mother, same father, but from another mother, had it all set up in his head how he was going to seduce his sister by being sick. 
and this was suggested by a so-called friend named Jonadab and Jonadab the son of Shema which was David's son so this was a family thing this was a family setup it wasn't like somebody came in from outside the family who knew them or knew of them no nah, this thing was done within the family and this is where sexual abuse happens you know sexual abuse happens within family family members amen and a lot of times we don't realize the traps that's been set up for certain members in the family who has been sexually abused by certain adults or young adults in the family far such as the father the mother uh uncles nieces etc brothers sisters etc because because of the obsession that people have to express themselves sexually and they won't go beyond the boundaries of doing it to somebody else but they would do it within their own com comfortable boundaries do it to people that they know personally that won't tell on them well some people do tell on them amen if they have the courage so a lot of this stuff comes from obsession just like Abs Amen was obsessed with his sister he was obsessed he was vexed with her she was beautiful she was fair and on top of that a virgin and so his only main objective was to seduce her to have sex with her so that he could get past his what sexual frustrations amen and when a person thinks about something all the time they do become obs obsessed with it and they start exhibiting compulsive behaviors you know doing stuff that they should not do to themselves for one because some people do sexually abuse themselves as i stated earlier to masturbation seeking pleasure through another person or they uh, get pleasure through other avenues and I believe that's how sexual abuse comes in because there's so much of this the person is not just abusing them sexually but they are mistreating them mentally amen mentally and spiritually it's affecting their soul and their soul becomes fragmented you know the word fragmented means broken into pieces amen because they scattered now you know what do you do when someone that you know that's supposed to love you and take care of you nurture you and they come now out of their own frust sexual frustrations you know giving birth to obsession and compulsive behavior and now they become aggressive and full of bitterness and hate towards you or towards another person in the family and the way they want to punish you is sexually hmm Oh, it's a deep subject, but it's a subject that needs to be talked about because it's a hidden sin that is hidden and rooted inside of families. Amen. A sin that needs to be exposed. A sin that a lot of us don't want to talk about. But if we don't talk about these things, they hold us in bondage. They hold us captive. And it, 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 it allows the enemy legal foothold in our lives and I believe that's why there's so much opposition in people's life when they do become Christians because they repent and they ask God to forgive them but do throughout the years of teaching the word of God and knowing for myself personally for myself there's still some stuff that is hidden you know stuff that we don't think about you know the unknown sins stuff that we've forgotten over the years the buried stuff amen and Satan's through his demonic you know demonic spirits that he assigned to each person's life finds an access to that um secret sin amen and once once he finds access it is our responsibility to repent to renounce it bind any other satanic influences around it and forgive whoever and most of all to forgive ourselves amen and speak the blood of Jesus and this will eliminate the opposition you know in in your life it will eliminate the works of darkness because you're now f connecting yourself back to Christ through prayer fasting 
and repentance. Amen. Living a life of holiness. For the word of God say, be holy for I am holy. But when we live in a world such as this, we're going to have challenges when it comes down to being holy. Amen. So, Ab Aham, Amen, sent out his servants, all the men out from him. And Amos said unto Tamar, Bring the meat in, into the chamber, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes, which she had made, and brought them into the chamber to Amon, her brother. I mean, come on. This is her brother. She wasn't thinking about, <laughs> my brother's going to rape me. You know, my brother's going to commit incest with me. You know, and a lot, and, and just to bring in the teaching to tie it up some, all of this came about because of their father David, because their father uh, slept with Bathsheba, who was another man's um, wife. And because he delayed in repenting, amen, uh, the Lord has sent the prophet. Uh, Naaman, Nathan, excuse me, to uh, to prophesy, to speak to him concerning Uriah the Hittite wife whose name was Bathsheba. Uh, when you get some time, that's in Second Samuel uh, chapter 12. Amen. And um, it will give the history about what David did and how the prophet came and spoke to David how he sinned against the Lord and and how David had to um suffer the consequences amen which he did uh, and I'm trying to uh, the consequence he suffered was the child died amen he did marry Bathsheba but the type but the child died and um out of that devastation um he this is where the psalms psalms 51 this is where the prayer comes from so whenever you get time just go and read the book of um psalms but because he because of the adultery that he committed it opened the door to a, a sin a generational sin a curse amen um because he did something that de that he delayed in taking it to God, and that's one of the things is when you delay in repenting, delaying uh, confessing your sins, it allows the devil to come in to oppress your life. It allows opposition to come in and cause um, destruction in your life. Amen. And not just your life, but in your children's life. But because he did that, the sword that I'm trying to find it says the sword um, that that he had used against uh uh against the wife amen it fell upon his household amen let's go there for a minute it says in uh samuel chapter 12 verse 9 wherefore that has thou despised the commandment of the lord to do evil in his sight thou has killed uriah the hittite with the sword and has taken his wife to be thy wife and has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou has despised me and has taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. So father sent the prophet to tell him that sword that you used to kill that man, that sword is going to be on your house and it shall never depart from thine house. And you believe me, when God say never, never is never. Amen. That sword is still on that house. Praise God. So here we go. Because of the sin of the father, because of what David did, it opened the door right here for his children. Amen. And it goes on to say back in uh, 13 chapter, 2 Samuel chapter 13, where the sister comes in, she takes food to her brother and the brother says to her, you know, he, he, verse 11, he says, and when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, come lie with me, my sister, come lie with me. And she asked him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not 
do do not doubt this folly. So she knew right then, no such thing should be done like this in Israel. Amen. Because it was the law not to commit uh, the sin, which is rape, you know, incest uh, with another family member. And um, she reminded him of that sin. And if you go with me, when you get some time in uh it talks about another incident that happened with um, Jacob's daughter, Diana, where she was raped also. And when her brother found out what, ha when her brothers found out what happened to their sister, they too took matters into their hands. So whenever you get time, read that. That's in um, Genesis chapter 34. But verse 30, verse 7 it says and the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it and the men were grieved and they were very wroth because he had worked folly in Israel in line with Jacob's daughter which thing ought not to be done he raped her amen that was the sin you're not to take a, another woman and to rape her and another thing is is what made it so bad with this situation with um Jacob's daughter Diana was that Jacob delayed in responding to the situation just like um David delayed in responding to the situation so thank God her brothers took over the situation the way they knew best the same way Absalom took over the situation because of his father not handling a Amon with with um discipline you know with discipline you know just act like it never happened just ignore it nah it, it doesn't work like that for all families amen so so she reminded him that this was a sin this is something you should not do in israel and it says and i would shall i cause my shame to go and as for thee thou shalt be as one of the fools in israel so she's saying you know what should i do you know this where where where, where would i go because it's the shame and you'd be a fool of israel now therefore i pray thee speak unto the king for he will not withhold me from thee so what she's saying if you want me if you want me to be with you go to the father you know and see if father will release me to you to be your wife amen and how be he would not hearken unto her voice but being stronger than she forced her and lay with her and then Amon hated her exceedingly. Ah, there it is right there. Sexual frustration. He had sex with her, but he wasn't satisfied. And the abuse, the abuse that he did to her, he took away her virginity and he hated her exceedingly. So that he, the hatred where if he hated her, her was greater than a love where if he had loved her and Amos said unto her arise and be gone he treated her like a dog get up and you know can you imagine you, you know you're talking to this brother whose mother is not the same mother as you but you have the same father as him and you're telling him how to bring resolution to this situation and then he turns around ignores what you're saying to him and Forced himself on 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 her, and rapes her, and then he hates her. He despises her, because that's what sexual frustration does. It brings out the worst out of you. It brings out aggression and bitterness. Amen. It could cause so much violence within a relationship, especially um, boyfriend and girlfriend relationships or marriage couples. A lot of time, married couples have a lot of anger, a lot of distress. Because of the frustrations. They no longer desire one another. So they mistreat each other. Or one mistreat the other. Where he or she is physically abusing someone else within the home. Or abusing one another sexually. Where the husband is now having the wife to perform sexual acts with him. That she's saying I don't want to do it. But he's forcing her because he hates her. Hmm. It's a deep message. I understand that. But it's a message that needs to be dealt with. Because people need deliverance. 
Some people say, oh, well, I don't need deliverance from that. God has, you know, helped me with that over the years. And so I'm doing okay in this area. Well, praise God. Amen. But there's some people who are not Christians who need to hear this message. And know this message is being taught by people in the church, in the Christian community. Amen. And it's, it's a dangerous thing to be in a situation that Tamar was in. Because the way her brother treated her. And she said unto him. There is no cause. This evil is sending me away. Is greater than the other. That thou this unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. And that's what she realized. She said. You raped me. You took away my virginity. And then you're going to send me away like this. That's evil. That's wicked what you're doing. She, she, let, she expressed herself to him. And then he called his servant. You know, then he caused his servant that this that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. You know, that's where as I treat her like a dog. And then over the years, there's so many people who has been treated in this fashion, if not worse. And because of the, the abuse and because of the the pain and the suffering that they endured as children, they too become the abuser. Hmm? It's so interesting how sexual frustration can cause so much hurt and pain in other people's lives through rape, incest, adultery, fornication, lying, homosexuality, being a lesbian, being bisexual because you're not satisfied enough and you don't know how to channel those frustrations. But God is able to deliver you. God is able to deliver you through prayer, through fasting, through repentance, by surrendering it over to God, asking God to forgive you, to teach you how to forgive yourself. Why, do, you know, people say, well, why I got to forgive myself? I didn't ask for, for this to happen to me. No, but if you don't start seeking and learning how to seek forgiveness for yourself, then it will open the door door for you to become a perpetrator you know if not you but your children's children it will skip a generation so the sooner you start asking God to teach you how to heal healing comes through forgiveness through releasing huh it's so important that people understand that where your healing comes from it comes through forgiveness where you have to forgive that person who did this act to you because if you don't, it will always control and manipulate your life. Control, manipulate, bring so much pain and destruction. Because out of that mess becomes a prideful spirit. Well, how could you have pride about it? Sometimes we could have pride in situations like this. So much pride to the point we don't want to share with no one. Because we're afraid of being ashamed. So pride substitutes what we don't want to feel. Which is shame amen praise God so it's so important to understand that the sin itself is a crime that you have committed not towards just the person but in the eyes of God and how many people will suffer as a result of their frustrations by being wicked and, and, and planting these wicked traps uh, in your life and in other people's lives amen i just hope this message is helping someone today because a lot of people just don't know why they struggle or why they or why they are being abused there's women right now in marriages that are being sexually abused and some women feel like well you know it will stop him from going out it will stop him from uh, seeing other women no it won't because he's not satisfied he or she is not satisfied. They will continue to do what they do out of their frustrations because they have unresolved issues from their childhood or their young adulthood where they did some things that caused them to become frustrated or some things were done to them where it caused them to become sexually frustrated. You know, when a boy is being molested by a man, and then he doesn't understand his own sexuality. So he gets sexually frustrated. Because he's dealing with the fact that who am I? Am I am I a man? 
Am I supposed to be with another man? Because I still have these desires of wanting to be with someone that I really don't want to be with because the way it was introduced to me. So you don't know how to deal with these frustrations. Amen. You don't know how to deal with these frustrations. Just like Amon. Amon had got poor advice. How to deal with his sexual frustrations. And out of his frustration. He raped his sister. And then he treated her like a dog. And that opened the door for war. Among family members. And if you continue to read the story. You will find out how Absalom went about handling that situation. Concerning his sister Tamar. Amen. Because the father didn't get up and do what he was supposed to do. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So don't let your sexual frustrations trap you up. You don't want to be trapped in a situation that God is giving you a door to walk out of. You know, to get out of this mess. And that mess comes through confession. That mess comes through repentance. But when people don't do these things, this is what happens. It makes a contribution, a negative contribution. Pornography, you know, drugs, you know, uh, being a, a verbal abuser, physically, mentally, spiritually, just constantly abusing people, having unhealthy relationships. You know, all these things begin to manifest. People become sexually addicted to having sex because they don't know how to deal with the frustration because they trapped. And so they do things uh, to, to enhance their sexual desires, even if it means having sex with whatever. You know, you'd be amazed what people will have sex with. You'd be amazed. Animals, not just children or abusing w women or going on the street with, um, uh, with prostitutes or having undercover low-down relationships with men or vice versa women. You know, there's so much things that people do to enjoy themselves sexually because of this sin, this stinking, nasty, filthy sin. That the enemy has came and used and brought division in so many people's lives. And it's not getting better. Because there's people that right now, why at the sound of my voice, why are you hearing me? Somebody is suffering now. And it's time for a change. It's time for deliverance to be talked about in the church, in the ministries. One on one counseling, premarital counseling. You don't want none of this stuff to come into your relationship. You know, sometimes people say, Well, I don't want my husband, I don't want my wife to know I was sexually abused. But what you don't want them to know is the very thing that the enemy is going to use against you to attack your life. Amen. So I just wanted to share this message with people who are struggling right now. With sexual sins, past sexual sins, or current sexual sins, or struggling in a marriage or a relationship where they are being sexually abused, you need to go and tell someone, speak to someone. Don't hide this thing because this thing will have a cause and effect in your life. If not yours, if you plan on having children, it will affect their lives. Amen. Praise God. And their children's children's life because it's a generational curse that needs to be broken immediately and put underneath the blood of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to do a prayer point on self-afflicted curses. Amen. For those who has been afflicting self sets on themselves because of sexual frustrations so i'm gonna speak this prayer point amen and then i'm gonna do another prayer point on um matter of fact if you are listening to my messages i have messages on generational curses so this is some of the prayer points that i'm using concerning um uh, deliverance right now for certain individuals who really needs to be 
delivered from sexual sin. Amen. Delivered from generational curses. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Over to you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. At the sound of my voice, when I pray this prayer, Father, let there be deliverance manifesting in that person's life. Let every stronghold that's been planted through their, in their lives through sexual sin, through sexual frustrations, pornography, uh, reading uh, books with illicit sex or being sexually abused by family members, homosexuality through their dreams and whatever the circumstances is, Father God, just I'm praying for their deliverance, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Father, I am sorry for every evil word I have spoken over my life. Please forgive me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, I am sorry for every sexual frustration I have allowed in my life. Please forgive me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, by the power in the blood of Jesus, I wash away every curse over my life. That has came into my life through words, Father God, through thoughts, through imaginations, through sexual frustration, through sexual sin, through sexual molestation, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, bisexual. Father, forgive me and cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Wash me, Father God. From my sins that I have committed knowingly and unknowingly in Jesus name. Oh Lord I speak life. I speak life Father God. I speak life right now God. Lord I release the spirit of life right now. I speak life Father God over this radio. This show right now over sexual frustrations. I speak life over those who has been broken. Who has been dismantled in their spirit. Their soul has been fragmented. Broken into pieces. I speak life to you woman of God. I speak life to you man of God. I speak life to your situation from your past. From, from your childhood. Even right now if there's anything that's going on in your life that is happening. Against your will or with your will. Ah, I speak life to you now. I speak the power of healing and deliverance in your life right now. I speak peace. I speak favor. I speak joy. I speak restoration and grace upon your life now in Jesus name. In Jesus name. I break every self-afflicted curse upon your life right now. I break every curse that is generated from the spirit of sexual frustration. I come against you with the blood of Jesus and I invoke the name of Jesus upon you now. Let them go. Set them free now in the name of Jesus. Every chain of darkness that is holding them bondage around their neck, around their waist, around their ankles, around their hands. I command you to let them go now in Jesus name. You have no dominion, no power, no authority over that individual or over the children or whoever's going through the situation right now. Lord, I decree and declare the power of the blood of Jesus over them right now from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I thank you, Father God, right now. Every agreement with familiar spirit that has been up or deity any agreement or familiar spirit or deity that's been operating in their lives, in their thoughts, in their dreams, in their imaginations. I reject you now. Reject them right now. Just start confessing. I reject you now. I reject every familiar spirit. I reject every deity. I reject you. I destroy you. I destroy you all in the name of Jesus. I reject you by fire, by force, every agreement with familiar spirit in my dreams, every sexual sin that I have committed in my dreams, in my thoughts, in my imagination. I destroy you now by fire, by force, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father God. Every curse against me. Just hear me when I say this prayer. And when you get some time, go back and repeat this prayer. But when you say it, say it loud. Say it like you mean it. It, needs, it, it requires your total concentration. Start concentrating on your prayers. Start speaking your prayers out loud so the enemy can hear you. So the chains of darkness can begin to fall off you. Amen every curse against me from my family 
from my village, from my town. I counsel you in Jesus' name. Every curse, parental curses, ancestral curses, generational curses, kindred curses, hereditary curses, I destroy them all in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Every chain against me, against my finances, against my progress, against my blessings, against my health. I command you all to be broken in the name of Jesus. So when you pray that prayer point, say it like you mean it. Just begin to come against every chain, every chain against you, against your family, against your children, every chain against your career, against your education, every chain against your finances, against your ministry, against your life, against everything every area of your life against your progress every chain against your blessings against your health if you're suffering with sickness right now break the chains right now break them by fire by force break them command them to be broken in the name of jesus praise god hallelujah Oh, I praise you, Father God. Over to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Over to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Every chain that is wrapped around your neck, around your waist, around your legs, on your hands, knownly and unknownly, command them to be broken in the name of Jesus. That's right. Begin to command them to break, break, break. Every chain, every chain, every chain wrapped around your neck, every chain wrapped around your waist, around your legs, on your hands, knowingly and unknowingly. Command them to be broken now in the mighty name of Jesus. I stand and agree with you right now. Every chain of darkness that has been put upon your life through sexual sin, through sexual frustrations, I come against those chains right now. Those chains of darkness that has been holding you hostage holding you bondage i come against them right now i break them i command them to be broken now in the name of jesus every covenant that is in operation against you against your household against your family from your father's side of the family from your mother's side of the family from their village from their town knowing and unknown i root them out of your lives now by fire by force i decree and declare matthew chapter 15 verse 13 over your life any plant that father has not planted in your life every evil plantation that has not been planted in your life by the father he shall root it up in the name of jesus hallelujah we come against every sexual sin, every sex addiction, every pornography spirit, every homosexual spirit, every spirit of bi bi bisexual, lesbian, every spirit that is unlawful in the kingdom of God. We come against you with the blood of Jesus. We bind your powers right now. In every individual that can hear my voice, I bind you. Whatsoever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. You are unlawful. You are bound until the day of judgment. Go wherever Jesus sent you. I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Go. Never to return. Never to re-enter. Go in the name of Jesus. Every sexual sin that I did not call out. I did not call out your name. I command you to go to the pit now. Go where Jesus sent you. Every sexual sin, masturbation, homosexuality, obesity, uh, bestiality, any sin concerning any unadulterated sin that I have not mentioned, sodom sodomy, every sexual sin, oh, anal sex, every sexual sin, fantasy, that has risen up against you through your childhood, through dreams, through pornography, oral sex, anything that is unlawful in the kingdom of God. I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. Loose them now. Whatsoever I loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I loose the fire of God right now against every satanic influence in your lives today. I loose it by fire, by force. Whatsoever I loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I loose the fire of God. God's consuming fire against every fetter, every chain that is holding you hostage, holding you bondage. Begin to rejoice in the name of the Lord. Shout Jesus. 
Shout the name of Jesus, for he is your deliverer. Call on the name of the Lord. He will hear you. He will come to your aid. He will rescue you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I stand now in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke and counsel all curses placed upon me by my enemies placed upon me through sexual sins through sexual frustration i rebuke them now i counsel all their curses all their satanic works in my life today in the mighty name of jesus father your words are life to me they are blessings to me therefore no man can curse me therefore no man no woman will be ever 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 able to sexually abuse me no one will be able to sexually abuse me just begin to repeat that prayer no satanic spirit nothing no influences or darkness will be able to sexually abuse me or my children's children's children i break this generational curse off my life because your words are life your word is like a hammer Oh, Father God, your word is like a hammer that breaks the rock into pieces. Every rock that has been set up in my life through sexual sin, let the word of God break you now into pieces. Break, 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 break now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I rebuke and nullify every evil word spoken into my life. I, Father, I rebuke every evil word that was spoken in my life every evil word that was spoken into my life every evil word that was spoken into my life saying i wasn't going to be nothing i wasn't going to be nobody i wasn't going to be successful i wasn't going to be financially successful that i wasn't going to have nothing no home no wife no husband no children i rebuke those words now i notify every evil word spoken over my life do every negative person that contributed to my life to every enemy that was planted in my life i nullified it with the blood of jesus by the power and the fire of the holy spirit in jesus name begin to repeat these prayers as you hear them begin to repeat them begin to take authority over your life amen Be begin to take authority over your life begin to recite the following prayers just say lord i stand now i stand now father in the mighty name of jesus and i rebuke and cancel all curses placed upon my life placed upon my children upon my finances upon my property my ministry whatever comes to your heart just begin to speak it amen begin to speak it with fire begin to speak it with faith amen just like it says it says your words are life to me your words are like a hammer father god that breaks the rocks into pieces father god therefore no man can curse me can curse my children's children's children cannot curse us with sexual impurity with sexual frustration amen just begin to speak the word of god take dominion and power and authority with the word of god believe god has delivered you and set you free amen amen i pray this message has helped you i pray somebody got delivered and set free tonight i really do i pray somebody got set free delivered tonight this morning this afternoon wherever you are in the world give god the hallelujah give god the praises thank god for your liberation thank god that you have been liberated amen you just thank god just say lord god in the name of jesus christ i stand before you i release myself for freedom for liberation for deliverance total deliverance in the name of jesus christ every yoke of bondage against my life against my progress against my blessings i counsel you i counsel you in jesus name amen every yoke amen remember isaiah 10 27 because of the anointing amen the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing so remember when you begin to decree and declare the word of god over your life amen you will be set free completely lib liberated amen you will be able to stand amen stand in the name of jesus i pray this message has helped you again the prayers i pray you will pray the prayers you know begin to allow the holy spirit to minister to your heart allow him to minister to you amen to heal you from the wounds of the past don't allow the devil the opportunity to 
take a legal authority in your life. Take it to Jesus. Don't allow him to do nothing in your life. Your life is in the hands of God. Take it to Jesus. Cast your cares over to Father God because he loves you. Go to him. Lay it down at the foot of the cross. Just ask him to help you to overcome whatever is going on in your life today. Ask him. He would do it for you. He would deliver you from sexual sin. He would deliver you from the abuse that was imposed upon your life. He would deliver you from hate, from bitterness, anger, aggression, compulsive behaviors. He will deliver you and set you free in the name of his son, Jesus. Believe me, he will do it. In Jesus' name, I know he will. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You are able, Father God, to do great works in our lives. And I thank you, Father God, for the works you are doing now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise God. Prophetic, Prophetic Jude International, International Ministries, Ministries with, with Prophetess, Prophetess Jacqueline, Jacqueline King. King.